Hello again, everyone. So here we are. We're getting ready now for game number two, which will be played on Dragonshire. We're going to bring you Alaskan Pipeline, in brackets, don't Google the name, versus Fairy Tail, who's one of the new teams. So we're really excited to see what they can bring tonight. Joined, um, sorry, casting this will be Kit Fox, joined by Disconcur this time on the analyst position. And for those of us uh, joining us, we do have a draw tonight. You can win a Genji Hero Bundle if you type in exclamation mark GS Hots. And we'll be drawing the winner at the end of game two. So you need to be in it to win it. But that's enough from me. I'm going to pass you to Kitbox. Thank you very much, Vandy, for that lovely introduction. And like she said, ladies and gentlemen, exclamation mark GS Hots. We've got so much swag to give away. Thanks to our sponsors at Blizzard ANZ. But for the first time this evening, well, it is a very, very good evening to a man you know as Dad in the scene. It's a good evening to Disconcur. Hey, Kit. Thanks very much for uh, introducing us to everyone in chat. Hope everyone's having a great, uh, great time tonight. And a look at this, we're already into the draft on Dragonshire. And what is it? Fairy Tail seem to be taking this draft pretty seriously. Uh, they got one second left on the ban. And look, Malfurion, he's already been removed off the board. Yeah, we saw what Malfurion could do last game, especially when you can land some good hooks on stitches. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough to get capital over the line over Ethereal. The mm. Ethereal lads did pick up the win over the tomb, on, sorry, on the tomb of the Spider Queen, but it's Alaskan Pipeline now with their ban. And like they say, don't Google it. I'll tell you what, just go. I'm not going to do that because this is ANZ Hots, right? You come for the teams, you stay for the memes. Oh, definitely. It's, um, yeah, guys, don't seriously. Kit Fox has not, he's <laughs> the, the, the most wisest words he has ever given <laughs> just then. <laughs> but, you know, I actually really like the Malfurion ban, first off. We have, it's something that we don't see a lot, Malfurion first bans these days, because it's just, you know, higher priority targets. But by throwing out the Malfurion ban like that, it's really forcing Alaskan Pipeline to go, geez. Do we want to give him the new rack? Do we want to give him the Dahaka? What do we actually want to give up? You know, you could think very hard. They could have banned Dahaka. They could have banned a new rack and gone, okay, we're safe now. But they're trying to pick up a power play like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a new rack with Dahaka here. They were hovering Dahaka to ban out with the Alaskan Pipeline lads, but they're actually opting with Brightly instead, so opting for a different sort of global uh, annihilation. And there you called it, able to get that swift, uh, sneaky pressure on wherever bushes may lurk, Dahaka being locked in. Now we can see Tyrael being locked in as well, so able to get a lot of value out with things like Sanctification or Judgment should they decide to take it, and Eldruins might great at closing the gap and getting away as well. Yep. Yeah, definitely picking it up. And we saw last week, actually, Kit, we were talking about it. We uh, got so fixated on sanctification, but our judgment into the back line against someone like your uh, ranged DPS, like a Valor or even a Greyman, could just be a, a huge bomb to the enemy's team. So picking up Tyrael, it's um, any any heroics are uh, worthwhile. Plus Tyrael, we do see him get a lot of value, a lot of play on this map as well. Falstad now being locked in for the Alaskan pipeline lads. Now, Fairy Tail here have got themselves a double pick, so Diablo frontline tank being locked in with the Harka as well. So very beefy melee centric frontline for the Fairy Tail lads. Wouldn't be surprised if they actually go straight for some damage here. Oh no, I'm going for the Uther. So yeah, not bad. I like it. It's very, very supportive, very, very strong, able to keep your two main frontliners up for ample amounts of time. And combine the Diablo, right? You're going to see those big um, overpowers. The characters moved behind Diablo. Uther can follow up with a stun. One of the big troubles with Uther and his stun is that he has to get to the enemy to do it. Sometimes it can put him out of position. But with the Diablo there, even the Dahaka with his um, tongue being able to pull opponents, uh, comboing it with the Uther, which is a click and point stun as well, mind you. It's not a skill shot stun. It's click and point. Easy, easy mode stun. So I really like that combo there. Diablo is not something that we are, again, that we don't see often on Dragonshire. You know, more heroes like uh, Muradin, uh, Arthas being favoured. But I do, sorry, them being favoured for their lockdown is what I'm trying to say there, as opposed to trying to use someone like Uther or support. But I, I do like that grab, especially Malfurion's off the board. Now, they were ho hovering Vela. Yeah, they were looking to um, possibly pick up their attack damage. If they picked up Valor, I felt it would have um, shown their cards too much. 
Or if they picked up someone like Valor, you would have seen that Uther would have been removed. You know, the enemy would have had the opportunity to ban out Uther. By picking up Uther, they've already locked it in. They can't deny that. And if Valor got banned out, you know what? There's other characters that kind of fill that role. Yeah, not as good as Valor would, but it gives them the option of flexibility. Now, the ban with KT here, I actually like that. You know, the other side does need to be... Oh, actually, they ended up banning out Valor themselves. Denying the next pit because we will see Alaskan Pipeline get the next two picks. So a bit of an interesting draft going on here at the moment. Tyrael Falstad, I'd really like to see Tyrael paired up with another warrior. Um, traditionally, you know, we'd see the Dahaka and Tyrael not going to be an option on the board from tonight. A new Barak still available, but now going for Greymane and Karazim. Nice, are they? Uh, because obviously Karazim with the uh, seven sided strike is going to be able to punish the Dahaka and Diablo. Car uh, you know, warriors that do need to get in nice and close. Uh, as you know, more of this sort of like range components we see on other lot of warriors. So that's going to be a really nice effect against them as well. Diablo can charge in, try and get a gray maybe try and get a false stab for displacement. But then the seven side strike can come out, sort of punishing that style of play or punishing the uh, Dahaka uh, sort of flank maneuver. I sort of like that. I uh, really like that. It also locks in their support as well. They could possibly double support, but I do feel Alaskan Pipelines will need a mage of some description. Which they still have access to something like Nazebo, um, Gul'dan, even Li Ming in that regard. Li Ming wouldn't be too bad in that lineup. But again, I still I still think they need a um, a warrior kit. I'm just looking at Fairy Tail now. Sorry, Kit Fox, you there? Yeah, I think there was a little bit of a problem with my mic there. I've seen it was sort of that one out. Discord being a little bit weird. So I disconnect, reconnect. She's all good. Try turning it off and on again. And that's, yep. you know, it works. So good down Lunara being locked in now by Fairy Tail. So that is the damage that we were talking about here. So I like the double tank on the front line. Like we talked about, the Harker able mm. to get a very good value off with his drag and that global pressure as well. I mean, Gazlawi, it's, it's interesting. What do you make of that one? Yeah, that is, you know what, that is. Any other map, I would say Gazlo is a little bit of a terrible pick. But here on Dragonshire, the natures of the objective, um, Barakas Holdout, another map we're doing later tonight actually has the same um, same value here, is that by placing the turrets, Gazlo has great zone control or controlling effect of controlling gameplay. You know, if you've got his three turrets down on the objective, and he leaves to go back into the lane, do something, um, you can't just run and take the objective because his tyrants will punish whatever the hero's there. Doesn't matter if you're a warrior, doesn't matter if you're a support, whatever, it will punish that play. Um, so I actually quite, I don't like the Gazlo ping, I'm not gonna say I like it, but I can see their thought pattern. They're gonna try and control the point. So, and just looking at the lineup, I think we'll have to, look, they've only got one warrior in the Tyrael. So they, they can't really send Tyrael into the top lane. So I think Gazlo is going to solo top lane. Tyrael is probably going to function maybe in the uh, mid lane. In we'll see Grey main fall. Oh, they got the false dad, so she's got a lot of choice. Looks like Greymane's going to opt Four, for the Gilnay and Cocktail three, build as opposed two, to the attack one. speed. So the stock standard bread and butter here for a lot of Greymanes. Let's see what Malevolent can do with that Brush Stalker on the Dahaka, but the level one little game of chess is going in. El Druin's might goes out as both of these two teams just scope out the bottom bush. Lunara forced to throw out a wisp just to give a little bit of vision to that bottom brush. MKL doesn't really know what's going on in there at the moment. Now the Alaskan pipeline lads still unsure as to what's going in there. They finally take down the wisp, but they're just chipping away at each other, Disco. Yeah, I mean, this is just standard early game, right? No team really has like a like a Savannah's where they can rush down a tower in another lane. So this is just the, uh, I call it the, the slap and tickle, or just the uh, the early game uh, hello aggression. But look at that, they've um, sort of rotated out now. Look at that, it actually is Gazlo and uh, the Harker in the top lane. So I sort of did get that uh, map up a little bit right in my head. Malevolent's definitely going to have his hands full, but you can expect those calls and pings to be coming out from Fairy Tail to uh, be going out very, very soon as we're already 
into the first timer disco for the dragon to be up very, very early on this match. Yeah, the objective does start to spawn really early on this one. For those, like, Dragon Shire is a pretty old map. It's one of the first ones that was available. And it's considered one of the high, most highly competitive maps because each side needs to have really good rotation, be able to split well, and then just be smart in how they capture the objective. Now, you see in the bottom lane here, Alaskan Pilot has already captured one. But, oh, they've actually captured both now. The Huck actually getting yeah, pushed out by the Gaslo. Oh, actually, I tell a lie. We've got Melo in the mid lane there, and he's actually snuck one away there. Now, Malevolent forced to rush stalk in, but there's nobody. Uh, well, there's nobody around at all. Melo going to get some nice damage off onto this tower. Meanwhile, Gazlo in the top lane plays up there. Does have one turret down. Not going to be able to get uh, as much off as he would like. He is completely out of mana, but back now to the mid lane. Diablo's in way out of position here. Vemp's trying his best to throw out those noxious blossoms just to chunk down Melo on the DK. Only at eight percent life. Fell flame getting value here from Gul'dan. Louis Grills doing a great job there on the ranged mage, but Malevolent and Rancid on that front line. They were without Diablo for a lot of that fight, Disco. Yeah, they just, it was a little bit slow to respond. Um, and then they sort of left uh, Gazlo in the top lane by himself. Um, this is like just one of the highlights that Gazlo played. We, we talked about in the draft of like what was Gazlo doing there. Now Rancid, as you now saw, just dead. then gets Fox, he doesn't pick up the Gazlo. <laughs> he finally rotated up the top lane and got him. But that's how powerful Gazlo is going to be in this matchup. If he's left by himself with another enemy hero in any lane, he's going to win that control game. He's going to capture the objective. And I don't think um, Fairy Tail really has the capability to to split their composition too wildly as they, they won't ever have a chance of actually capturing both objectives if they do a heavy split. I think Flies is quite happy to play his Gazlo's similar style to a Murky here in the sense that like he's more than happy to die for his team as long as he's able to get the objective and like we said before he did actually manage to take down the wall and one of the towers, nearly the second tower as well. Now the rotation coming up from Vemps throws out the Wisp just to give a little bit more vision because there's not really much of that going on. Malfurion was taken off the board so that scouting drone is, is nowhere to be seen. Hammering though from Melo finding a, a good value there. And he's actually going to be looking to build up stacks of seized marksmen. So expect him to pop off later. But there we've got an engage in the middle lane. MKL though throws out the smite there trying to chase him down. Gilnay and Cocktail doing massive amounts of damage from Arrow on the grey main. And the fairy tale lads, they got chunked pretty hard in that engage disco. I think the best thing for them to do here is just sit back and heal up. Yeah, and especially with the shrine spawning in 20 seconds, they really need to be ready for this. They need to either capture the bomb shrine and do a massive rotation to the top to get the gas low, or they need to just, you know, let's just cut our losses, go to the top, kill the gas low, put pressure and push that lane. You know, it's not always about capturing both objectives. Sometimes about controlling one and pushing a lane is far more valuable. Now, Kanke, uh, sorry, Kaneki on the bottom lane, gonna get that bottom uh, moon tower. Now, Flay's going up on the top lane there with those towers. Rants are now being kited away, but the charge is too good. And well done there, picking up the kill onto Gazlo. So it's gonna be one tower apiece. No, actually, the bottom one has in fact been pinched by Fairy Tail. And now it's all up to Malevolent to try and pinch this DK away from the mid lane, but Arrow and Melo are there. And they're going to make sure that there's not going to be anybody trying to huff and puff and blow their house down, Disco. That was really good positioning by Diablo just then. So we talked about those turns from Gazlo being a huge impact on the game. Diablo used his Shadow Charge to actually push Gazlo completely away from it, allowing him to get that kill. Gul'dan just throwing out the Fell Flames there, forced to tap in, needs to be very, very careful, does have the support coming in from Uther, but now we can see the, the man on Diablo that was getting it done on Gazlo in the top lane has picked himself up the DK, but there is solid damage coming out here from Alaskan Pipeline. That charge isn't actually going to be able to find anybody, and this DK is not going to get any value because they collapse onto Malevolent. The Hark has now been taken down, that's one of the front liners down. Rants are taking a lot of damage, Hammerang finds its mark, and so does Eldruin's might. With the Radiant Wave coming in from Uth and managing to heal up uh, Diablo, but unfortunately, Malevolent was taken down there. It's... We, in pre... like, Dragonshire is such a well-rehearsed match. 
uh, map that we see a lot of um, DKs taking quite a long time to capture. Oh, sorry, just going to have to cut you off there because Flares is copping the hurt up in the top lane. It's Vents and Rancid. Not going to need a leap strike because that noxious toxin is uh, going to do the work for you. Well done, Vents, picking up the kill. Oh, that is. That, that's what I was talking about. Is that to get the control of that lane against Gazla, they're going to need to do more things like that. Get a rotation up. Punish is being overextended and get the kill on him. However, it still hasn't given him level 10. It's actually still the last of pipeline that has that. Bottom lane again is where the action seven sided strike is in. It does a lot of damage into APOC now, just trying to buy some time. Smite is unable to pick up the kill and Xena Dragneel on the Uther, just managing to get away by the skin of his teeth there. And just as you're talking about level 10, just go like lightning, these teams were able to lock them in, except for Dahaka and Uther. Yeah, the starting what they want to really play here, you know, to be honest, um, I mean, Dahaka probably should be going with adaptation, 100%, no choice there. But Uther, you know, Divine Storm, Divine Shield kind of both have um, important plays and he's here. on the Storm. Um, that's... That's probably what I would be thinking go more towards, but like that the shield could have some potential here. But he's going for the extra stun. So imagine Diablo go and goes in, gets a throw, apocalypse, and just stun. Action on the bottom lane, it's a seven-sided strike in an MKL fantastic gust coming out there from Melo to push all the fairy tale away because MKL had his head on the chopping block. Well done there, sanctification. Uh, is still in the bank, so didn't even have to pop that. The gust was all they needed. Well played there from the foul set. That that seven side strike saved that saved the last min pipeline just then. They didn't, you know, we saw a fairy tale didn't want to go in against that, but we you you just saw there the, the diablo went in. He did the flip. Uther did his stun, and then if the seven side strike wasn't dropped, that divine storm could come out of Uther again, another lockdown, and we would have seen Tyrell actually die. The seven side strike kind of spooked Fairy Stale a little bit, and they had the back out. So, well played by both teams, but that's the potential value there on taking Divine Storm. So, Hammering still doing a lot of damage at range. That's what I love about Felstad. He's just able to do so much damage from afar and then close any sort of gap you got on. Now, again in the top lane, Malevolent is being duked around by Flaze here. On that top tower, he gets the drag off. It's still not going to be enough, and Flays actually wins oh. out there. But down in the bottom lane again, another seven-sided strike. Eldruin's might goes in. The sanctification has been popped. Reds are taking a lot of damage. Divine Storm unable to save them. And the Alaskan pipeline lads have picked themselves up three kills, two towers, and a DK to boot. And this is a nine-minute DK as well, uh, Kit Fox. This is the DK that can start really ravaging structures now. It's actually doing enough damage. Uh, now, just quickly going back for a mess, fight breaks out. Oh, I don't think I'm going to have time, though. MKL taking a lot of damage again, forced to blow shield. The stun does come out there from Zendragil and does get the kill. The tower picking up the kill there, so poor old Tyrael goes down. They still do have the DK on their side, but the Alaskan pipeline lads. Corruption goes out from Gul'dan, gets himself in a great position to use Drain Life to its fullest. And a great horrifier, that's going to catch out Falstad. See you later, Sunshine. Melo hits the deck, as does Kaneki. Great play there from Fairy Tail. They turn that one around. They've got the little difficult to say. They're no longer at a level disadvantage. They will no longer be very, very soon because Flay is in the bottom lane. Does actually manage to put Alaskan Pipeline ahead. But Disco, that is the fight that they were after. And Rancid again trying to engage on Flay's in the bot line. Zendra Gil's down there on Uther. And I don't think they're going to be able to pick him up here. Flay's actually going to get away there. Yeah, not against the Diablo and, uh, and Uther, there's, there's no way they could have locked him down and got the damage on, unless Gazlo, Gazlo had already taken a huge chunk of his Lama life. I mean, that was a huge overextension just then by Alaskan Pipeline on that uh, fortification. Um, I, I don't, I guess a little bit of overconfidence in their plays, but um, they, you know, they were effectively uh, 5v, you know, 5v4 in that instance, and the ta and, you know, MVP to the tower which uh, ended up getting the final hit on Tyrael. MVP tower. <laughs> Three votes tower, well done. Hammerang still <laughs> doing a lot of damage. And the Alaskan pipeline lads just clutching onto a slight advantage here. Fairy Tail, they're going to pick themselves up a Bruiser Camp, but as is Flays and the Gazlowies for the Alaskan pipeline lads. So, again, it's it's still a tit for tat here. And if Fairy Tail, then they're not at a tier disadvantage yet. If they can win another fight here, they're still in this. Who will control?
The way Gaslow's playing, allows, so Fairy Tail really needs to start taking advantage of that, going, well, look, they're going to be four players most of the time. Let's start forcing some fights. Let's get these kills early on and punish the Gaslow split lane tactic. Um, but I mean, like, then maybe this could be the start of it. Dahaka has rotated to the mid lane now. Malevolent should be up there dealing with Flays, and then when a team fight breaks out, he, his teammates should be going, hey, we need to engage here. The Alaskan pipeline lads are one down. Just use your, your, your brushwalker. That's the way it should be going at the moment. His Stoke is winning them the games. So the Alaskan Pipeline lads are winning off the back of the Gazlawi Soak here at the moment from Flays. So he does actually have... Look at the experience, Disco. It, it's, it's chalk and cheese. Oh, it's... Dahaka can't... He just... Dahaka just can't deal with the Gazlo. The zone control from those turrets is mm. too strong for Dahaka to really deal with. And he's had to expend them resources. But there's like, action in the bot lane. Dahaka forced to borrow. So I don't know about the seven-sided strike. Probably a little bit of overkill there. But Ranta comes in with the APOC. Got a lot of value, but they're at a one-man disadvantage now. The bomb going in. A fantastic horrified Ranta with the flip, but he gets thrown into the Alaskan pipeline backline. And they've now got themselves two towers. Well done up the top in the sorry in the mid lane now, just hiding in the bush. He's gonna have to try his best to get this, uh, to stop this DK from going down, but all he's gonna do is give himself up a kill, tries to drain yeah. life, but three players get melted, son. Well done there from Alaskan Pipeline. They're gonna get themselves a DK and a mid fort here. This is good for them. I mean, this is, this is again, like, they, they've got no opposition right now, so they're gonna be able to take out this uh, fortification pretty easy. And, and now they can start working on gaining access to, a, to an actual key. Um, and I, there's really nothing Fairy Tail can respond with too heavily right now because they're not level 16. They're, they're a talent down, and that is a huge disadvantage in Heroes of the Storm. Malevolent Force, the Dark Swarm trying to get some heal. Now forced to burrow as well. Vemps needs to be careful. He doesn't get hit with Go for the throat like that. And, uh, well, I'll tell you what. It was lucky not to go down there, was Vemps. And, uh, sorry, it wasn't Go for the throat. It was just, uh, just his leap. And uh, the MKL does actually get himself a kill there onto Malevolent on the Dahaka. So this is good for Alaskan Pipeline. They've still got 25 seconds left on the DK, trying to get down one of those kicks. Flays, meanwhile, in the bot lane, just farming it up. Farming, farming, farming. Fantastic Horrify comes out. The Rigus on the Gul'dan needs to be careful not to go down there. Oh, that was close, Disco. Very, very close, but Drain Life gets it done. We Uther. Uther has got to be doing more in this game. He's going to be getting those stuns off. Rance is going in, he's getting the flips, but Uther is not following up with enough of his stun work. He's going down in the bot lane. Rancid is going to get melted. See you later, Diablo. Four man gank in the bot. Flaze was not even needed. Now he's got four turrets. Just dishing out the hurt in this bot lane. It's. <laughs> if you're on Fairy Tail and you're looking at this, you're just going, God damn, man. Not like this. Not to a Gazlowie. And now MKL throws in the Eldruins might seven sided strike gets value gets I think five hits of the seven off but, but divine storm coming out from Zenith Gill MKL is gonna go down Radiance is not sorry righteousness is not going to be enough and that little DPS boost that Cherio can do gets nobody so well done there to Fairy Tower but they did actually lose that bottom tower and it's all down to Flays on this Gazlawi oh hundred percent like Flays right now is you know what do you I'm not going to necessarily say he's playing a good game as Gazlo, but... He's playing the he, correct he, game as Gazlo. Well, he's playing his own... <laughs> Sorry, he's playing his own game. And he's doing it well. I mean, he, he's just been left completely unchecked. There's, like you said, the zoning potential that he's able yeah. to dish out is, is, is what is... why he is so valued. And it was a questionable pick, but on a map like this, where you can... you have the opportunity all he's going to do here is assist Fairy Tail in, in capping this camp. Three stuns, not bad. Uh, but like I was saying, uh, on a map like this where you do have the opportunity to get those split so to get in one of those specialists, you often see somebody else. I mean, you often see in the Zeebo, um, you, but you don't see a Gazlawi so often, so he's pulling, pulling it off well. Like, like I said, he against the lineup for Fairy Tail, he's having a Fairy Tail game, what's a good like that? But <laughs> against the lineup, you know, he punishes the Haka, he punishes the Lenala. The ghoul damn. The only one he doesn't overly punish is Diablo. As we saw, one of the few characters have managed to get a solo kill on him. But that's more about based on luck and positioning. So they have to expend quite a lot of resource to deal with Gazlo. 
and they've decided just to not do it and it's to their detriment it they need to be doing that but they're not and i don't and I, it's probably too late for them to start doing it now they're three levels down and they're desperate for towers. They're so desperate for towers here that Rance is going deep. They actually managed to nullify the seven-sided strike. The Horrify goes in, but not before Gul'dan goes down. Smite goes in to give his team a little bit of speed boost. Then to heal. Oh, he's going to hit the floor. Gets the heal off. Oh, good stun as well. But Kenneki picking up the kill back onto Malevolent now. He does actually manage to borrow and run away. But Hammerang too good. Lightning right now. And the rest of the Alaskan Pipeline lads going to capitalize and collapse onto Fairy Tail. I don't think they're even going to bother here with the Shrines Disco, they don't care about the DK. MKL now forced to blow his Righteousness just to make sure he stays alive. They're just toying with Rancid. They do not care at all for the DK at the moment. They've got the towers in their favor, but they're going to take the mid fort. They're going to do their best to do as much damage as they can to this mid fort. Arrow doing a great job here on the Grey Main. Now Rancid on this front line just trying. Actually forces the sanctification out of Tyrael there, but they're going straight for it. Seven-sided strike goes in. Rancid, he's going to hit the deck. Well played there from the Falstad. Well done to Melo, well done to Kaneki, and well done to Alaskan Pipeline. They're going to pick up the win here over Fairy Tail. GG's go out, and the cool Murphy with the shades just concur. We are in for some games tonight. That's it, Alaskan Pipeline. Just uh, just showing their um, understanding of uh, let's say, call it character matchup was just too strong for the uh, for the Fairy Tail boys. Um, you know, hopefully they walk away from this and uh, take uh, you know take a couple of lessons. But uh, yeah, Alaskan Pipeline. Don't Google them unless you're looking to uh, see how good they are. <laughs> um, dude, two hundred and six thousand siege damage from Flays on Gazlawi. Twenty five thousand experience. Just sit back a minute and let that sink in. How much this man did? I I think it's a no brainer who I'm giving my MVP vote to. How about yourself? Oh, hands down. You've got to give it to um to Gazlo in this sense. Um it takes a it takes a brave player to go, I'm gonna play Gazlo because I know he's a good matchup. Even in those circumstances, you're still playing a character that can potentially be bullied. So yeah, hands down, MVP to Gazlo, and a secondary MVP has to go to that tower against Tyrael earlier in the match. <laughs> we did call it tower MVP. <laughs> it was a close one, but I think I'm going to have to give this one to Flay. So congratulations, Flay, picking yourself up a nomination into the GameStar MVP program. But the results are flying in thick and fast, ladies and gentlemen. We're down two games tonight. But for now, I'm going to pass you back over to your host, Vandy. Cheers for that, Kit Fox. That was some wonderful casting by Kit Fox, joined by Disconcur on Dragon Knight. Um, on Dragonshire, sorry, <laughs> with that Dragon Knight. It was really interesting, as you said, to see such an off pick, a comfort pick, if you will, on that Gazlo. And I think we were all just wrapped watching to see how it played out. So for those of us, uh, for those joining us, we are going to draw the um, next skin, and that was for Genji. So get in your exclamation mark g is hots while you can and in a moment crisis will be closing off the draw to pick our next winner so just a moment now and congratulations the winner is offline so we're going to draw another winner but it was ioxfi the next winner is superstition hots so congratulations superstition you've picked up a Genji Hero Bundle for the evening. But not to worry, if you missed out on this one, there will be another one coming up. This time, we've got two Diva Hero Bundles to give away. So stay tuned for that. We're just going to cut to another break while we wait for the other games to finish. Um, so we'll be back in just a moment. 